Okay, the next job um, that has to be done is concerning the superheater pipe. Now the superheater pipe has to be bent through 90 degrees so it runs parallel with um, the chassis frame because it goes through um, this centre flue. And I've just been sort of trying to figure out a bit more about the instructions. If you look here, um, the rear of the boiler sits on a foot here. I'll show you the other side. It sits on a foot there, and then there's a boiler band that goes around this side, and then it fits here, obviously with the cab floor. So I'm just trying to. It sits a little bit higher than what I thought, but the instructions say superheater pipe should be running parallel but about 20 millimeters two center two centimeters over the frame and because this is a stainless steel pipe it's not copper it's going to be a little bit harder to bend than normal so what i've thought of doing is using this wooden bit of wooden dowel and i'm going to put that on the chassis like this and use it to support as, as support as I bend the pipe round and I figured out that once it's been round once it's bent round to through 90 degrees it's going to be roughly two centimeters above the chassis frame let's have a go at bending it and let's hope um, I don't damage the pipe during the bending okay here we go let's try it out Right. Get in there slowly but surely. So we bent it. Let's uh, see if we can measure up how high it is. So it says just under, the way you can read that, it says just under um, 25 millimetres, but taking the thickness of the pipe into consideration, we're about, we're about 20 millimetres. And um, let's have a look, see if it's horizontal. So about right, perhaps it's dipping a little bit towards the end. I think once it's in the boiler flue, that will sort itself out. Okay, um, the next stage involves bending the exhaust pipes around the T piece to go straight up so that the smoke box can be fitted. So um, I'm working my way through that and uh, I've started to bend one. And remember, it has to be come out centrally in the middle a bit, uh, you know. Um, so I'm going to bend those pipes slowly, taking care because um, the pipe work is actually screwed into the bottom part of the um, steam cylinder. And um, I'm going to be doing that off camera and then let you and then show you the results. Um, and the reason we're doing it because we need to fit the, the smoke box because the smoke box provides the forward support for um, the boiler. Okay, that was a bit worrying. Um, finally managed to bend the exhaust pipes to roughly the vertical position. There's not a lot of room on either side. To maneuver to bend them in the right position the instructions say bend them so that they come up just in front of the t of the superheater so that's what i've what i've done so there we've got the foot plate uh, the front plate fitted and um, i'm just going to leave the pipes as they are now and maybe they'll need some minor adjustment uh, later on when we uh, when we fit the uh, smoke box but that will do for now quite um, 
find that found that quite a difficult process. I was um, extremely wary of uh, of uh, making a kink in the in the pipework, so I was working with uh, wooden spatulas and 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 trying to try and force the right bend in the in the pipework. And it took me quite a while. For the next part, we're going to um, concern ourselves with the smoke box, the foot plate, and some detailing um, for the smoke uh, for the smoke box. We've got a brass a top for the for the chimney. We've got a curved handrail um, that fits on the top of the smoke box at the front there with it with the handrail knobs. And we've got the door, door handle and that we're going to mount that uh, on the smoke box and then um, the smoke box using the two see the two screws here underneath we're going to mount that from beneath onto um, onto the front foot plate using the, to the two provided screws so I'm going to start with uh, handrail knobs and um, because the hole is tapped, both holes are tapped, um, you're going to be very lucky if you, when you screw it in, you, you get the, the hole for the handrail in exactly the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use thread lock 542 um, on the thread of the handrail, on the thread of the handrail knob just to uh, when it gets in the right place when it's when it's fitted in the right place that then the handrail knob will stay there then so just a small amount small amount and then uh, we'll screw it in roughly the right place no that's not it I have to turn it back just a little bit something like that. I have to work a bit quickly because of the thread lock. So again the other one Let's get the handrail through So there it is, and I'll leave that for for the time being as it is. And what's our perhaps I'll do later is um, just put a bit of glue on one side, just on one side, just to hold it in place. But that's what I'm doing for now, just putting it on there like that. Okay, so one point concerning the the door handle um, the door handle um, obviously it's got um, thread on the inside to take the take the nut but there's also a collar where there's no thread and unfortunately when you put it into the smoke box and you put the nut onto it there's not enough thread it's not biting to on, on the on the inside to fasten it so I'm going to be putting one or two 5BA washers on the inside and then put the nut on so that it actually clamps it up. Something perhaps, uh, it's not written in the instructions that, but it's perhaps something to consider if you're going to do it yourself. I don't know if two, if two are enough, but we'll give it a go. The smoke box handle, the large, larger of the two handles need to be pointing straight down, something like that, and then I'll get to work with a five. I haven't got a, I haven't got a five ba um, box spanner, so I'm going to have to 
wing it with with a normal 5B8. Yeah, that looks about right. So, put this back in. So there's two out of three. So the last one to put on is the uh, the brass cap, chimney cap. Um, I'm going to leave that until it's the smoke box has been uh, mounted to the floor, and that gives it a better that gives me a better platform to uh, to uh, attach it. And in the instructions, by the way, it says um, to use araldite or similar. So I'll be using an epoxy. One of the comments that I had in uh, one of my earlier videos is, why don't you use blue tack on the screwdriver to hold the small screws? So I can't remember who it was that said it, but uh, <laughs> good idea. I should have remembered that. Um, so I'll be doing that now to attach uh, the smoke box to the floor. Okay, there's one. Not too hard at the moment. Let's have a look. See whether that's about right. So that's the front foot plate attached. So now we're going to get the epoxy out and attach the chimney cap. Okay, I'm using um, bison uh, epoxy, and according to online, it's good for plus 70 or 80 degrees centigrade. So I hope that's going to be enough. That should be enough. So I'll mix this up a bit. I'm going to use this thin cut out here. I'm going to be doing the handrail first, so I'm going to put it on the one side. Make sure that's in the middle. Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to use the other end to put the lime on the inside of the chimney cap. Again, not a lot is necessary. Now, there we go. So we'll let that set and then uh, we'll crack on to the next bit. 